Okay, now if you listen to the Enviro Nazis, they'd have you believe that every time you start your car, somewhere in the world, a polar bear dies. But the reality is that the car industry has in fact done more to reduce greenhouse emissions than almost any other industry. Actually, in Australia, cars represent less than 8% yes. of the total carbon emitted in the atmosphere. Yeah, this got us to thinking. Uh, at the moment, look, uh, the motoring world has a veritable plethora a of fuels. A veritable fuel... plethora? Yes, yeah. Paige, a lot of alternative <laughs> fuel sources plethora. available, which got us to thinking, how good are they really? OK, koala huggers, listen up. What we're going to do is take a selection of the best alternative fuel cars and drive them over a variety of terrains, in the city, through the suburbs, and then out in the country, to see both the positives and the negatives associated with each. OK, so of course we're going to have the Prius hybrid. Mm. Biggest selling hybrid in the world. This is the third generation, but it's still got two motors under here, a petrol motor and an electric motor, to do the business of not much. Well, that's what I love about this. This is the most fuel-efficient car in the country, and it's just a normal turbo diesel Fiesta. Just a normal car. It drives like a normal car. Duh. That'll be right. Ah, uh, good old Jacobson what? brings a knife to a tofu fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, mate, the Holden SS Commodore. Six litre V8. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. That happens to run on E85 fuel. Fuel source made from corn, sugar cane, or anything that contains sugar, which works. That's actually the right card. First, let's hear some of the advantages of these green machines. So what's E85? Well, the 85 stands for 85% ethanol, the same as E10 fuel stands for 10% ethanol. Now, Despite what some people think, there's absolutely no loss of power. But ethanol does burn faster, and what that means is you travel less distance on the tank of fuel. For me, I like it. I think it's kind of, I don't know, guilt-free driving. SS. Under the bonnet of my hybrid Prius, it's more bite than bark. You've got a small petrol engine, a 1.8 litre, not unlike what you get in a Corolla. And under the bonnet, you've also got a little electric motor. And what happens is, from rest in the city, when you're just taking off, you're going on electricity. No engine emissions. Above 40 kilometres an hour, or if you give it a bootful, in comes the petrol engine and you're running on petrol. And that's why, in the city, it's really hard to beat a hybrid for economy. But the diesel engine in the eKinetic is more than capable of giving it a run for its money. What I really love most about this car is that it in fact proves that you don't need some weirdo technology like hybrids and all these other things to make a really fuel efficient, environmentally friendly car. It's just using existing technology that's been around for over a hundred years and they just sharpen the pencil on it and there it is. Now, if we look purely at fuel consumption, of course the V8 SS on the E85 biofuel is going to use more than the hybrid Prius or the diesel eKinetic. 12.2 litres per 100 k's, in fact, but the fuel it does burn is cheaper and more environmentally friendly. Now, whilst Holden designed the Series 2 Commodore to run on both E85 and regular unleaded, just do yourself a little favour. If you have a car that's only designed to run on regular unleaded, do not run the E85 in it, or you will have to get a new fuel system. The hybrid only uses 3.9 litres per 100 kilometres. But the leanest of the lot is the diesel Econetic. It uses just 3.7 litres. So it's all good news then. You can almost hear the greenies jumping for joy in their community gardens. But hang on there, Aquarius love child. As our cars head out of the city, we start to see a little more of this split personality. And it's not all good news. OK, so there's only 100 service stations around Australia that serve E85 fuel. And it turns out that this servo isn't one of them. Being this whole story is about alternate fuels, I'm actually forbidden from using regular unleaded. So this is where I have to say goodbye to the SS Commodore. So with my beautiful SS sitting on the side of the road due to a lack of the right fuel, a car that never needs to visit a service station sounds at this point like a bloody good option. Even if it is electric. Talk about going from a puma to a pussycat. 
I'll tell you who's really impressed with these truck drivers. It's electric! Hey! Electric! OK, I, I made a small mistake. It appears truck drivers couldn't care less about electric cars. I was wrong. This is the Mitsubishi Innovative Electric Vehicle. It has zero emissions at the tailpipe, but costs a whopping $70,000. Ouch, that hurts. The Prius is economic with its emissions, but it comes at a cost. One of these, look at me, I'm a greenie status symbols, costs over $35,000, or about 30% more than the modified Corolla it really is. But that's not its biggest problem. Instead of focusing on car emissions, maybe what Toyota should be doing is exporting this vigorously to places like China, where they have a massive overpopulation problem. Because I'm telling you, every bloke who buys one of these will never get laid. Never. The diesel e-kinetic uses less fuel than the hybrid, but diesel isn't without its problems either. Litre for litre, diesel emits more carbon than unleaded. And because it's a denser, heavier, less refined fuel, you end up emitting all these toxic nasties out of the tailpipe. They're really bad for the environment, but they're even worse for your human health. On paper, it looks like the electric vehicle is the cleanest and grandest, but they are far from perfect. In fact, with a driving range of just 80 kilometres, when the vehicle runs out, your refuelling options are limited. And ironically, environmentally disastrous. This is not as heavy as it looks, you know. But actually, I think it's a little bit heavier than that because of the batteries. You right? Yeah. Now, thanks for your help. I'll tell you. You know, the fact that I've had to push this car up a hill because it ran out of battery power is not our beef with electric cars in this country. Our problem is that in the background, the power station, the thing that these ultimately get plugged into because that thing runs on brown coal. It is the dirtiest way in the world of producing electricity. Pagey, if you could say a few yeah. words. So actually what Shane's trying to say is all they've done is shift the greenhouse gas from the exhaust pipe to the exhaust stack. And you're no better off. While Paige and Bazzardi may have thought it mildly amusing to leave me stranded, they obviously weren't smart enough to think of an old alternative fuel technology. But, unfortunately, LPG isn't a silver bullet either. The problem I've got with LPG is although it's better as far as emissions, the reality is a car on LPG will travel a third less distance than a car running on regular fuel. So, at the end of the day, it's actually worse for the environment. Who knew? That's no offence to your cab, Jimmy. I'm stoked just to be getting a ride. Now, I don't know about you, but all this talk about going green makes me feel about as excited as a brickie at a ballet. <laughs> I think I need to fire up that V8 again to get me back on the straight and narrow. The question that people at home are asking now is what is the answer? OK, well, right. there isn't actually just one answer. There's no silver bullet. Yeah. And this tells us about the future. There's going to be a whole range of options because mm. there's a whole range of energy sources that in Australia in particular we can call on. Yeah, but funnily enough, the best compromise to all this is in fact over here. Mm. It's something that we've had all along and it is in fact a lean burning, direct injection, very efficient, Petrol engine. That's the Absolutely. best compromise right there. You know, these cars do represent the future, believe it or not, I think. We'll be back right after this. <laughs>